I think this is probably the music that I would gladly play for the rest of my life. Um, if someone had to tell me, you can only choose one repertoire, one slice of the repertoire, it would be the Mozart piano concertos. There's no question. It, it just it brings me such joy, but sadness as well. There's a there's a kind of hidden melancholy I find very very present in Mozart. So. It's the range of emotions that appeals to me so much in this music. But you're right, it, it is such an unbelievable privilege to, to play this extraordinary repertoire. I didn't really grow up playing a lot of Chopin when I was a student. So I played the G minor ballade, I played a few of the nocturnes, but it, it was a kind of foreign territory for me. I played so much Haydn and Mozart when I was a student that I, I, I just tread very carefully in the Chopin domain. Um, what I find with piano sound and technique in this period from about 1820 to 1830, 1835, certainly by 1840, the kind of revolution in the way the piano is treated, what the hands are asked to do, the kind of technical requirements, it just, it's like it's an unrecognizable style of piano playing for me. Mozart has become such a, a, a kind of comfortable zone technically because Mozart writes for a very specific style of piano playing and that just explodes in the next 30 to 40 years and so when I look at something like the F minor piano concerto I mean it just looks like impenetrable just impossible what what he demands and what when it's played so beautifully as we heard tonight just sounds so completely natural and effortless and just like spun filigree and not torturously difficult writing. But I would like to play more Chopin. Um, uh, it's something that I'd like to do over the next few years, just slowly and without too much pressure, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's true. Um, it's, it's not exactly a complete piece that we have from Mozart, but it's a kind of fragment that's also been cobbled together with um, excerpts from K306, the D major sonata for violin and piano. And Phil Wilby, I think, made this slash reconstruction invention in a way. But it's a really successful piece and it works really well. And I've never played it. This would be the first time I'll do it. And neither has Isabel. So um, we'll do that together for the first time, uh, hopefully next year. It's, it's one of those things that's very curious that Mozart writes in so many genres. Uh, you know, he writes bassoon concertos, flute concertos, oboe concertos, uh, sinfonia concertante for multiple winds, viola and violin too, violin, solo, violin, piano. He doesn't write a cello concerto. There seems to be some fragment of that, though. And he doesn't write curiously for violin and piano in orchestra, which is puzzling because it was such a popular, popular combination for domestic music making. And in fact, someone like Haydn takes it a step further and he writes a concerto for violin and harpsichord or organ or forte piano. So this Phil Wilby concerto is really a kind of, it's a real, it's very tantalizing that, that it might be a possible version of what Mozart, Mozart might have had in mind, but I'm very excited to do it. And especially with Isabel, um, I would very much look forward to that. Uh, that's a very good question. Less and less so, in a way. Um, of course, it's the instrument I started on and started my official training on, but uh, I find more and more the question of what instrument you play this repertoire and has such a massive impact on how successfully the kind of emotional language of that music registers to the listener. When you hear a Chopin concerto on this setup that we heard tonight on gut strings and with instruments of the early 19th century winds, I mean, and, and then a beautiful erad like this um, of the time, you understand that the idea of a composer writing for a specific instrument and for a specific setup is not just a kind of accidental extra, it's actually a crucial part of the rhetoric and the emotional language of this style. And I find with Mozart especially, it's so clear that questions of, of instrumental color and the texture of the orchestra is so inexorably linked to what Mozart had in his mind's ear at the time, writing for the best wind players of the 1780s, or the Mannheim Orchestra when he did Idomeneo in 1781. And so more and more I find the piano is a similar thing. It embodies Mozart's love, deep love for the instrument. And so playing his music on those pianos speaks more deeply to me. Of course, I love playing on the Steinway as well, but it ends up becoming a kind of a kind of transcription in my mind 
it feels wonderful and it's very luxurious and deep and rich and, and incredibly satisfying. But there's a kind of fragility to Mozart and a, and a very adventurousness with an orchestral and instrumental color that comes across on the pianos of his time. And if you hear a Mozart concerto with a forte piano and an orchestra like the 18th century, you you discover these new colors of, of revolution and, and at times ugliness and then incredible warmth and subtlety, something that is difficult, not impossible, but difficult to recreate with the more homogenous, corporate, perfect, absolutely factory perfect sounds that we encounter from the modern orchestra and the modern Steinway. So with each passing year, it becomes more and more a question of a real emotional attachment to an instrument. So I suppose the answer is yes. <laughs>